Okay, well, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here um, and uh, see a lot of uh, people I know. And um, I should tell you that this, is a, this paper is a joint paper with uh, Joseph Halbrick uh, from the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland. So Joe's here, and he's going to go through part of the, sort of the empiric, empirics part of the paper. Okay, so it's called, the title is Deep Recessions, Fast Recoveries, and Financial Crises, Evidence from the American Record. It's not exactly on the Great Depression, but the Great Depression is always in there. Um, so this paper is, a, you know, it's a very straightforward scientific paper, but it kind of went viral in the, in the fall because the, um, the, um, the Romney uh, econo economists uh, incorporated it in their, in their platform. And they cited this paper and they cited some other ones. And so then it got picked up by the press and there was a, uh, a lot of uh, mud being slung around. And so these are just some of the, of the, of the quotes that, that, uh, that came out about what we did. So I, I thought maybe you would know if you, if you, if you remember, if you, you would jog your memories. And if not, you would sort of maybe, maybe make a decision yourself on whether we deserve uh, those, um, those, um, those nice statements. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. uh, so uh, this recovery from the last recession has been, uh, has been proceeding uh, now for 15 quarters. So that's a pretty long time. And a lot of people have argued that this is an unusually uh, sluggish uh, recovery. And some people have said that this reflects the severity of the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. In fact, some people have argued, and I mentioned here Rubini, and then the, the, the Reinhardt and Rogoff's book, so they argued that when you, have a, when you have a big financial crisis, you're gonna have a slow recovery, and that's just part of the, of the story, and that this is not really an unusual event. But yet, um, we, we feel that, in a sense, that when you do look at the record, of, of business cycle recoveries uh, in the United States um, that, uh, and going back not just in the 20th century, but going back into the 19th century, uh, that it seems like maybe uh, when you have a serious recession that actually the recovery is, 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 is quite, quick, quite quick. In fact, this is a quote from Milton Friedman, a large contraction tends to be followed by a large business expansion. And Friedman had this model that he used when I was a student of his in the late 60s. And he had this model called the plucking model, which the idea was you had this board and a string attached to it underneath. And he was describing the American economy. The board was, had a slant to reflect the fact that the US economy is growing by 3% per year. And then you pull the string down. And the farther down you pull the string, the faster it snaps back. Okay, so Friedman, Friedman's hypothesis was, and, and not, not just his hypothesis, but a lot of data that he put together suggests that when you have a really deep recession, you're going to get a very fast recovery. Um, and so, so we picked up on that, and also Zarnowitz, in his, in his 1992 book on business cycles, uh, again, showed that when you had business cycle recessions with panics, and this is the period before World War II and we had them, that the, 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 the recessions were very severe, but that the recoveries tend to be, tended to be rapid. And so what we did was we re revisited the issue whether business cycles with financial crises are different. And we focus on the US experience since 1880, and our methodology is to look closely at, uh, at the record across several monetary regimes. Um, and in a sense, the, 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 the paper is an economic history paper combined with business cycle analysis. And we think that focusing on the US, um, in a sense, has a, it, it's a methodological decision to, to look at one country in great detail, and in a sense, take a flashlight and go back into history and look at different episodes, okay, versus the approach that a lot of people have taken, which is to look at a panel of many countries and then look at the experience across countries. So we, in a sense, we, we, we thought that we would look at, uh, at the one country approach and avoid some of the issues that you have by, um, by taking the, the panel uh, perspective. And what we find is that the, the conventional wisdom that deep contractions lead to strong recoveries 
is particularly true when there's a financial crisis. So Friedman didn't cut the data that way. He didn't distinguish between whether a deep recession was associated with the financial crisis. So we did that. And we find that, indeed, it, his, his story holds up. Um, and we also find that the recent recession is different from the historical average, and it's seen in a shallow recovery after a deep recession. Now, we looked at some issues about what's going on. And so we do find some evidence that measures of financial strength have some impact on, 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 on the strength of the recoveries, which is a, a very conventional view. And we also find that a significant fraction of the shortfall of the present recovery from the experience of recoveries after deep recessions is due to the collapse of the housing market. So um, what we do in the paper is we, the, we, we, part of the paper is a narrative, and we present descriptive evidence and historical narratives on US business cycle recoveries from 1880 to the present. Um, and what we did was, um, I mean, there's a detailed discussion in the paper, but what we did was we, to, to measure this, the recovery or the bounce back, we compared the, the quarterly path of, of GDP from the preceding peak to the trough of each business cycle. And by trough, we mean NVER designated peaks and troughs. And we compare that with the quarterly path of GDP uh, from the trough for the same number of quarters that occurred in the downturn. And we did this for 27 cycles. Okay. And just to briefly mention the, the episode, so the first, we divided it up into these three, these three regimes. So it's pre-Federal Reserve, the gold standard. Uh, and this is a different world. We don't have a central bank. The sources of the shocks are coming through. Uh, the tightening of the Bank of England, uh, harvest failures, et cetera. And there are also big domestic shocks. Uh, in railroads and, and, there's, and their banking panics. And we have, uh, you know, we look at a number of, of, of business cycles, and there were many panics back then, there were six, and also many uh, uh, stock market crashes. So we really focus on two very serious recessions and panic, famous panics, 1893 to 94 and 1907, 1908. And I'm just going to show the picture here. So this is the 1893 crisis. So what this shows you is that the, the, the bounce back, which is a, yeah, the, the, the recovery from the, from the trough, okay, occurs before uh, that line. So that line is, is in a sense, normalizes. And what you, what, if, if the bounce back is very fast, then you're gonna have that line, the recovery line cut uh, to, the, to the left of the, of the axis. So you can see that. Um, we also have, the, if you look at, at two, 1907, um, which I don't have in this, in this slide, I have it at the end of the slides, you get the same picture. In the interwar, okay, uh, that, now the Fed's established, and everybody knows about what happened in the interwar. There were 25 years, three very severe business cycle down tiers, one that had four severe banking panics, and then there were a number of minor cycles. Okay, and also the Fed, in addition to wars and other stuff that's going on in this period, the Fed, Fed policy actions are key in precipitating and mitigating cycles. And so this is 1920, and again, you see that this is a very severe recession, and you can see the bounce back is, is very rapid. Okay, now we have the Great Depression. For the Great Depression, the recovery, I mean, the, the drop was enormous, it went for 17 quarters. Okay, the real economy fell by, by, by 33%. And the recovery afterwards was very rapid. So the real economy is growing by 9% per year, but it's not rapid enough to get you back. So the Great Depression is, has some re resonance to today when the economy does not fully recover. Okay. okay. And, and the, the period after, um, and, and part of that story is that there was a recession, another recession, a double dip that occurred from 37 to 38. And that recession uh, also had a rapid recovery. Okay, so um, in the post-World War II period, we had, uh, we had the, the general pattern was that recoveries were at least as rapid as the downturn. And the only exceptions were 1991, uh, to, uh, uh, were, were the 1990s, and the recent recovery uh, since 2009. And the recent recession was the only one that had a banking crisis, a stock market crash, and a housing bust. 
Okay, and we look at, again, we look at all the recoveries in that period. So again, this is 1957. This is a, a big recession. The fall in output wasn't as big as this time, but it was pretty high, it was close to 4%. You can see a fast of the, the bounce back. This is now. So now you see we, you know, when you, when you come up to even today, we haven't quite got there. Okay. So I'm going to let Joe finish this and talk about the empirics. So Mike showed you one series of pictures. I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw out a few more pictures. Um, the sort of data we use is based on some previous work we've done. It's fairly standard quarterly data. We use NBPR dating for recessions, um, for financial crises. A lot of times there's a little disagreement over exactly what counts. We use some work from Bordo and Ike and Green added in 1914 when the bond market closed down. And for the post-World War II period, we use Lopez, Salido, and Nelson. Uh, contractions are the percentage change from the peak to the trough. And then the recoveries are measured either one year or four quarters or the duration of the contraction after the trough. So if it was a contraction that lasted seven quarters, we'll look out seven quarters. Uh, there, you know, there are different ways. This is what we've chosen. Um, so, do financial prices affect the bounce back? <coughs> Generally, not that much. But let me show you what we have. So, let's take a look at deep recessions and steep recoveries. So, these are in our data set. These are the business cycles in which there was a financial crisis associated with it. So, if you take a look at this and you plot. Um, the horizontal axis is the contraction amplitude, how deep the fall in GDP was. So the bigger this is, the deeper the recession was. And of course, the vertical axis is how strong, in percentage terms, the recovery was. If you look at this, you see a pretty strong positive relationship. And this is just looking at the crisis cycles. So it looks like, even for the crisis cycles, if you have a deep recession, you tend to have a strong recovery. Now, let's take a look if we look at the non-crisis cycles. Okay, there are more of those, but if you look at this, you really don't see a positive relationship between the size of the contraction, the depth of the recession, and the strength of the recovery. So that relationship doesn't seem to be there. Um, suppose we combine these. I want to like take a couple minutes just to go over this, because there are a few points here. Notice you put them together, if there's a stylized fact that a deep recession tends to be associated with a strong recovery, that actually is being driven by the cycles in which there is a crisis. So the kind of factoid we started out trying to investigate, which was a financial crisis is going to slow down your recovery, in fact seems to be exactly the opposite. In fact, it's the crisis where you have a deep recession, when a recession where you've got a financial crisis, those tend to be the ones where you see a strong relationship between the depth of the contraction and the strength of the recovery. <coughs> now, if you look carefully at this picture, you'll see I've got to add a little asterisk into that because if you just throw in a dummy variable for whether or not you had a financial crisis, that dummy is negative because if you have a very weak recession, a very small recession, and you associate that with a financial crisis, then you're actually going to have a, a somewhat lower intercept. So it's not completely linear monotonic effect. But it's also the case that mostly when you have a financial crisis, you have a deeper recession as well. So you tend to see a bigger bounce back in general. Um, we verify this with a lot of regressions that I'm not going to drag you through. Um, in general, sometimes you see some that are significant. Sometimes it, that you don't. It depends if you include or don't include the Great Depression. It depends if you look post-World War II, pre-World War II. In general, if there is anything significant, and sometimes you will see not a lot of a significant difference, and I think that's important anyway, because it would say there's not a big difference between these two cycles. And again, the factoid that we started with, that maybe a financial crisis makes the recovery weaker, doesn't seem to hold up 
But where we do see something that significant, it's that the deeper the recession, the stronger the recovery, and that's particularly true in the cases of financial crisis. Though again, that depends exactly on your sample. And we've got lots of tables if you want to look at the paper. One of the main objections that maybe comes out of this, well, maybe there's something qualitatively different. There's a big difference between the Great Depression and some of the minor banking problems of 1990. We try and control for that. We try risk spreads to see if that will tell you how bad the recession is. We try the quantity of bank loans, that if that really fell, maybe it's a worse recession. We use Reinhardt and Rogoff's measure of how severe the recession is, how severe the crisis is. None of that really matters. So it doesn't seem like there's a big qualitative difference. What sort of difference is there? Well, our preliminary idea is maybe it's got something to do with housing. Of course, it's no news to anyone here that housing played a major role in the crisis of 2007, 2008. We do a series of counterfactuals. So think back to the pictures that I showed you. In this, we plot what you would get from a regression, if you fit the regression, of looking at the, re of the recession versus the recovery. So the strength of the recovery versus the size of the drop. This is for the recessions that we've seen since 1920. If you look in the current case, there's a particularly big difference between the fitted value, which says we ought to have a pretty strong recovery, given the sort of recession we had, versus what we actually saw. What's behind that? So here's a puzzle. Throw in most everything we could think of. Throw in a measure of the spread. Throw in a measure of what happened to the stock market. Throw in a measure of real loan growth. And things look a little bit better, but there's still a pretty big gap between what you would expect and what you actually got. We then throw in a measure of housing, basically residential investment, known to be a good predictor of business cycles. And this is probably too good to be true, but it actually almost completely closes the gap. I, you know, I don't want to you know, tell the people in Washington this is exactly what's going on, but it's at least suggestive. Um, so I think I'll stop there. Uh, I, I think what we've done is try to take a good look at the American record where we, or at least Mike, understands what's going on uh, to give some idea of recessions, recoveries, and financial crises. Thank you very much. <laughs>